Good day, students. In this group, we're going to be going over some examples on uh, limits and continuity, basically using limits to determine um, if a function is discontinuous on a specified domain or not. Okay. So the instructions are as follows. Use the continuity test to determine if the function is continuous. If the function is not state, the test is failed and describe the nature of the discontinuity. Support your answer uh, graphically. All right. Before we... Um, to the examples, let's go over the continuity test real quick. I'll just take it here, continuity test. Um, basically, it states that um, if a function is continuous at a point, so if um, f of x is continuous at c, then the following condition must hold. Number one, um, f of c has to exist. Basically, um, c has to be in the domain of f. And then two, the limit. As x approaches that c value of the function has to exist also. And then last but not the least, um, the, the value of the limit has to be equal to the value of the function. So lastly, uh, the limit as x approaches that specific c value of the function has to be equal to the value of the function at that c value. All right, so these three requirements must be met in order for a function to pass the continuity test and in order for you to conclude that the function is in fact continuous, okay? So let's take a look at um, example number one. So for example one, we have, um, let me put it up here so you can see. What if we had the function f of x equals uh, sine x over x <clears throat> uh, if x is less than zero, and then it's equal to five. If x is equal to zero, and then is equal to the absolute value of x when x is greater than zero. So let's say we have this piecewise defined function, um, and we're gonna look at a specific a value. In this case, we're gonna look at a equals zero. All right, so that's what we're looking at. All right, so the question is, is this function continuous at a equals zero? Okay, so let's start uh, going through the tests, part one. Um, does f of c exist? That's the question we're going to uh, answer, okay? So, um, f of a, I'm sorry, f of a exists because a is a value that we're considering. So, a is zero. So, what is f of uh, zero? Does it have an output value in this piecewise defined function? It certainly does. The output value is five, okay? So, it passes the first test. Now let's go to the second test. The second test is does the limit exist? All right, so what we're going to do is since we have two different functions on both sides of A, of A uh, we're going to approach from the left first and then from the right, all right? So let's uh, use a number line to illustrate what we're about to do. So we have a number line and the A value that we're looking at is zero. To the left, this is a function that's active, sine x over x. So when we're approaching um, zero from the left, this is the function we're going to look at. And then from the right, we're going to use the absolute value of x when we're approaching zero from the right side. All right. So the question is, do these two limits approach the same value? If they do, then the limit does exist. Okay. And it'll move to step three. All right. So, so step two, does the limit as x approach, approaches um, zero, um, of the function exists. Does this limit exist? That's what we're going to find out. Now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the left hand. Left hand. So starting from the left hand side, the question is, does the limit as x approaches zero from the left of the function exist? So what is this? The limit as x approaches zero from the left is the sine x over x function, sine x over x. And then from the squeeze theorem, we know that this limit is simply um, 1. 
All right. Now, um, let's go ahead and take a look at the right hand limit, right hand. We're going to find the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of the function. That's equal to the limit, actually from the right. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the absolute value of x. Okay? And then we know that this can be written as the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of plus or minus x. Now, since we're coming from the right side, um, x is going to, uh, this function is going to take on the positive sign. Okay? So this is going to become the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x. And then we can do the substitution here, and we can see that the limit is clearly 0. Okay? All right. So what does that tell us? The, it tells us that the limit as x approaches 0 of the function does not exist. Okay? Because the left and the right hand limits are, are dissimilar. All right? We can write down a reason because... The limit as x approaches 0 from the left, from the left, let's change the sign, it's supposed to be negative, from the left is not equal to, of the function is not equal to the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the function. All right? So the, um, the limit does not exist. So what does that tell us? It tells us that um, the function function is discontinuous, discontinuous. All right, so what kind of uh, discontinuity um, exists here? Now, we notice that uh, the limit does not exist, so we know that it cannot be a point discontinuity. It's either infinite, oscillating, or jump. So are there are any of the limits, the left and the right hand limits, do any of them involve infinity? No of them, none of them involve infinity. None of them are oscillating. They would uh, um, approach finite values, which are different. So since you both are, um, approach finite values that are different, we have a jump discontinuity, a jumping from 1 on the left to 0 on the right. So the type of discontinuity here is a jump discontinuity. All right, let's take a look at another number, number two. All right, so for number two, let's say we have the piecewise defined function f of x equals um, x squared minus 4 over x minus 2 when x is not equal to 2. And let's say the function assumes a value of 4 when x equals 2. So, um, so we're going to uh, go ahead and, and, and do the test to see if it's continuous, okay? So remember, it has to pass all three tests in order for us to conclude that the function is continuous. All right, so let's start with uh, test one. Test number one, let's use the... Um, Roman numeral I um this f of um a exist. Okay. In this problem, let's let a be where the, the jump happens, which is basically two. Let's like a b two. So part one does f of a exist. Okay. So let's see. Is f of two defined in this function? F of two, the output is four, so f of two is defined in this function. All right, so let's do the second test. Test number two. Um, does the limit as x approaches a of this function exist? Does the limit exist? So um, let's go ahead and evaluate the limit here. We have only one function, so we can just, we don't need to um, go from the left or to the right since we're looking at just one function. So what we're looking at is, does the limit as x approach 2 of x squared minus 4 
over x minus 2, uh, does this exist? If we um, make a substitution right now, we're going to have a 0 at the denominator, which makes it undefined. So let's uh, factor the numerator since it's factorable. When does x approaches 2? That can be factored in x plus 2 times x minus 2 over x minus 2. The x minus 2s divide out. And then you have, you're left with the limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 2. I can make it a substitution. It's 2 plus 2, which equals 4. So the limit does exist, and it's 4. So it passes the second test. So the third test is, does the limit as x approaches the a value of the function equal to the value of the function at a? Is this the case? Well, let's see. So what we are asked now is, is the limit, we know that the limit of x, as x approaches um, 2 of the function, what, what was it? It was 4, right? Is that equal to the value of the function at 2? Absolutely. So this is equal to f of 2. And what was f of 2? 4. All right. So since the limit is equal to the value of the function, then the limit does exist then, um, I'm sorry, then um, it passes test number three, okay? So this is the limit is equal to the function. The limit exists and the function is defined at that value. Conclusion is the function um, f of x is continuous at um, a equals zero. Continuous at a equals 2, sorry, at a equals 2. All right, so there you have it. All right, so the next example, we're going to be uh, making a function continuous. So let's take a look at uh, question number three. This is of a different nature. Um, so the question is what value of a will make the function, will make f of x continuous? where f of x is equal to um, 3x plus a, and x is less than 3, and um, 2x plus 5 when x is greater than or equal to 3. Okay? All right, so what value of a will make this function continuous? We can clearly see that if we want the limit of these two functions to be the same, we're basically going to be making a substitution um, of 3 into these two. So all we do here is we just sim we're simply going to substitute the, the limiting value into these two functions and then solve the resulting um, equation, okay? All right, so we know that... Um, for this function to be continuous, what's going to happen is that the left and right hand limits are going to have to be the same. The value, we know that f of c is included in the lower function right here, the critical, the point where the switch happens, 3 is included in this lower function. So basically the limit um, as x approaches 3 from the left of the function has to be equal to the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of the function. Okay, so what are we looking for here? Let's go ahead and apply the function. So the limit as x approaches 3 from the left to the left is the, this uh, function 3x plus a. It has to be equal to the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of the function, which is 2x plus 5. Okay, now to evaluate this limit, we're going to make use of substitution in both cases. So we're going to have 3x. Um, I'm sorry, we're going to plug in 3 for the a, so it's 3 times 3 from the left plus a equals 2 times 3 from the right plus 5, okay? Now this is just simply 9 plus a equals 2 times 3, 6 plus 5. 
All right, the goal here is to isolate A, so we just subtract 9 from both sides. So we're going to have A equals 11 minus 9, and A equals 2. Okay, so this is the value that makes um, the function continuous. If we plug in 2 for A right here, then we're going to have a, a, um, a continuous function. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Now feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking here. You can comment on the uh, comment section, like or share this video with your friends. More clips can be found on mycloserve.com slash calculus, or just um, scan this QR code for direct access. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.